Welcome to Thrive with Pride from Age Options, an online space for LGBT plus older adults and those who care for them. This month, we welcome Joe Smith from Mom's Mills, who led a discussion about nutrition and health in older adults. This is a recording of his presentation held on Zoom. The Q&A and discussion that followed were not recorded. Okay, so welcome everyone to the April Thrive with Pride event. We're really glad to have uh, Joseph Smith or Joe Smith today. Uh, so his biography reads as such, uh, going through life with a very common name and an uncanny physical resemblance to Jack Lemon has given Joe Smith a combination of tenacity and humor that he readily applies to complex business issues. With over 35 years experience in managing the delicate business relationships between the public and private sectors in issues as diverse as I, I apologize in issues. Uh, I'm so sorry with 35 years experience in managing the delicate business relationship between the public and private sectors in issues as diverse as promotion of pharmaceutical products, anonymous HIV testing and emergency communications. Joe has established a reputation for honesty and integrity in both arenas. He has published and spoken extensively in the era area of ethical business promotions. Among his professional associations are memberships in Legatus, yeah. the League of Business Ethics, the American College of Healthcare Executives, the Society of Competitive Intelligent Professionals, North American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Mr. Smith lives in Oak Park, Illinois with his wife, Dr. Anna Lynn Skipper, and he was educated at Villanova University and the University of Pennsylvania. Joe, we're so glad to have you here, and I'll turn this over to you. Well, great. Well, thank you again, Jason. You know, I just realized I did not write that. That was written by a professional writer a number of years ago, and I need to update it because now it's 45 years of experience in having been in pharmaceuticals and healthcare. So it's, uh, uh, wow, how did that happen? Anyway, thanks so much for taking the time to let me share some information with you about the, the incredibly important issue of of food and nutrition. This is not gonna be a commercial about Mom's Meals. I do work with Mom's Meals. It's my semi-retirement job. And I work in uh, issues of, of talking about food insecurity and how we really need to address the issue of, of really what food insecurity is. And it's not malnutrition in this country, it's kind of misnutrition. Uh, we have a tremendous access to an awful lot of uh, food uh, that isn't the right stuff for us to have. So if I can get this slide to go next now, this is where the plot thickens. There we go. That's me, that's my contact information. If I can ever be of any service to you, please feel free to shoot me an email. I work very closely with age options, in particular, Philip. Uh, uh, email's a great way to get me. Uh, in a real emergency, uh, please call on the phone. Uh, I uh, tend to return my emails in the evening and in the early morning, I have a deal with my bride, who's one of the richest future widows. I know that I will not be doing texts or emails in the car and driving to the back of a truck. But what I'd like to share with you is some information about food insecurity and its relationship to health and the difference between food insecurity and nutritional security. Talk about some important facts. I'm gonna share a little bit about what we've done at Mom's Meals to try and help with it. And then uh, questions, answers, conversation, uh, I promise you, if I don't have the answer, I will find the person who can get it for you. After I turned 50, I quit lying. It's put so much more time on my life and made things so much easier. So, you know, what does the expression food insecurity mean to you? And just think about this. This is not going to be a quiz of any kind, for gosh sakes. But here's a working definition. When people don't have consistent access to sufficient food and a sufficient variety of foods to support a healthy, active life, they are considered food insecure. Poverty, unemployment, even transportation issues can lead to food insecurity. This is no surprise to anyone. When I first started working with Mom's Meals, and I thought it was going to be like a six-week consulting gig seven years ago, um, I talked with the, the people running the company, and they're wonderful uh, folks. They're all the age of my children, so I'm sort of like the Secretary of State when we get to chat together. I talked with them about the social determinants of health and they looked at me like I was from another planet at that point in time. I don't mean that in a bad way. Seven years ago, we weren't worried about housing and food and transportation. And now more, I would say most importantly, isolation uh, as they are all component, components of the food, the continuum of health, trying to help everyone live with as much dignity as possible in these incredibly trying times. 
Now, specifically to food, the idea of nutrition has come to the forefront in two interesting ways. The Nobel Prize for Peace was awarded to the UN World Food Program in 2020. And think about everything that was going on in 2020, that making sure people have access to even enough food at this point in time and any food. You know, we live in an incredibly interesting country when it comes to that. We can feed a family of four going through the checkout at a Home Depot. Uh, and if you look at it, none of it's really all that good. Uh, and part of that has to do with the fact that uh, the food industry understands who we are. There, um, there's a wonderful book called Tasty. It's about the science of the tongue and talks all about what tastes good and what doesn't taste good. And if you just pick up your average label, what are the first thing you're going to read? Usually water, salt, and sugar are going to be the first three things you're probably going to see on most labels at this point in time. The second issue, though, is the recently concluded White House Conference on Aging. And I would encourage everybody to try and monitor some of that, even in the lay press. The last time we had a White House Conference on Aging was in 1972. And one of the byproducts of that was the WIC program that takes care of women, infant, and children. And for many years, I worked for Old Ross Laboratories and helped implement the WIC program. And actually, by way of full disclaimer, I'm one of the people who introduced Ensure to the marketplace and am now part of the marketplace to drink it. Uh, but the White House Conference on Aging is going to have some third and fourth order effects. And I will keep in touch with Philip about this. And consequently, Jason, you'll get the information too. I would not be surprised, my friends, if in the next three to four years, the USDA doesn't change part of its mantra from being the promotion of American agricultural products and food to really beginning to look at the nutritional content and value of foods. Uh, and it's entirely possible that the FDA will divide into two different organizations, one looking at just foods and one looking at just drugs. And I'm happy to chat with you about what I think that that could be. I could probably be wrong, but there are gonna be a lot of seed changes in terms of what happens with food and nutrition over the next several years. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is when we talk about our health and the healthcare system, I've been saying for the last 45 years, there's nothing wrong with the healthcare system. It's terrific. It's the sick care system that doesn't work that well. And if any of you have been through it, you know, recently, my, my bride decided four years ago when she looked at her uh, bucket list that she'd forgotten to break her leg. And, uh, and by training, and my wife is a registered dietitian. I should give you full disclaimer on that. That is the food equivalent of being married to a psychiatrist. She knows everything I eat and when I eat it. But between the two of us, we had over 90 years of experience in the healthcare system. She practiced for many years at Rush. And we had a tough time figuring out the bills. What's it like for someone who's played by the rules their entire life, becomes ill chronically, perhaps with cancer, thinks they've done everything right, paid all the bills, and then they get a bill from something called a radiation oncologist. That's the complexity of the system. Well, where does food fit into that? Well, the fact of the matter is, if we can get people access to good food, we can help reduce some of the costs of hospitalizations. We can help people stay in their own homes. This is probably as close of a commercial as it would come to it. Mom's Meals is not in the food business. We're in the dignity business. We're in the business of helping people stay in their own homes, eat food they want to eat when they want to eat it, and have that sense of being where they want to be, not warehoused, for want of a better term. And I hope that makes sense. But these slides, they're very, they're very readable, but what goes on? And the cost, you know, we're talking about a healthcare system that is 17% of a $21 trillion gross domestic product. And that's just the measurable stuff. I'm not talking about, you know, the things that you see at two o'clock in the morning, or I get up still on what I call East Coast altar boy, paper boy time, about 4.30 when I'm trying to find the weather channel, you see these infomercials for these products that you know, claim you'll be able to run the mile in 37 seconds. And if you look at the fine print down the bottom, it says the FDA never even heard of this product. So there are all kinds of things out there that people are, are being exposed to. But here's the call for action on nutrition support. One in four Americans have a chronic condition. In 2021, three of four Americans, those of us over 65, have at least one chronic condition. 70% of American deaths are due to chronic conditions, not trauma. Uh, I'm not embarrassed to tell you that, you know, after I turned 50, I got my Lipitor prescription and I am now in a mild antihypertensive and I'm married to a dietitian, for God's sakes. But it's just, we all have these chronic conditions and aches and pains, et cetera, et cetera. 
Good food can help with that. It can help reduce falls. I'm going to give you a scary number here. The cost of treating cancer in the United States is $31 billion. The cost of treating falls in Americans over the age of 65 is $33 billion. Now, how many things can we do to, to help reduce the chance of falls? Better eyesight, uh, grab bars, and, and better food. Modern medicine as we know it came into practice. I hope you can see this. When Robert Hood, Hook explained that this is a winch and a pulley, the body is a machine. Machines need two things. They need gas and they need oil. Food is gas, water is oil. If you want a machine to work well, give it good food, give it good fuel, and put in adequate water across the board. It's probably one of the most controllable Although, you know, because of things like food swaps and food deserts and cost, hard to get, but it's one part of your healthcare you can really get a lot of control over. Now, we talked about chronic diseases. The number one killer in this country is still heart disease, no matter how we look at it. Notice this, how many nutritional components are related to heart disease? We can, we can control some of these by addressing the nutritional components. Let's look at diabetes, which is the, the ultimate elephant in the room. Um, you know, giving, we're making progress with, with diabetes control. It's really gonna be done for the next generation. As we get, you know, the sodas out of the lunchrooms and, and the, uh, the better foods for, you know, younger people growing up, you know, being a baby boomer, I'm, you know, I'm kind of shot because, uh, I'm pretty sure my pancreas has been done in by Snickers and Fruit Loops and all the other candies that we ate over the years. But once again, notice in diabetes management, the nutritional components that are controllable. And then of course, kidney disease. And I'm very sympathetic to kidney disease. If anyone here has ever had kidney stones, I'm part of that fraternity. If you ever have a chance to get kidney stones, don't do it. But again, there are nutritional components that can be controlled by good food, good eating, intelligent approach to your meals. It, it, any questions at the moment? Does any of this make sense? Is there any value here to what we're talking about? Okay, I'm gonna assume that we're making progress here. There are certain things that can be done in terms of where to get guidelines for, for good healthcare. And this particular slide, and Jason has these slides, so if you'd like to have them at some point in time, please feel free to do so. Here are the professional organizations who can help you with these issues. The one that I will point out most is Malnutrition, Undernutrition, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, www.eatright.org. That is the professional organization for registered dietitians, nutritionists. Those who have taken predicted courses, have passed examinations, they are truly the pharmacists of nutrition. When in doubt, contact a registered dietitian. You can go on their website. They, they uh, have dietitians available to you by zip code. Most local hospitals will uh, give you access to an outpatient dietitian, and many of them at no charge to help you. But these are the organizations that have the best information for what's going on out there. So I'm gonna share a little bit about what, what we, we've done at Mom's Meals to try and be a helpful ally with the social determinant of health of food. And I'm seeing something in the chat and we'll see if I need to address that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, come on, Joey. Having trouble here at the moment. Here we go. There we go. Our mission is improving life through better nutrition at home, but really it's about dignity. We all want to stay in our own homes. Um, you know, I, I, I love this particular place here. And certainly the books are real. I haven't colored all of them yet, but this is, uh, this is my hobby of sitting in, in my library in my home office. And I want to stay in my home as long as I possibly can. Now, what we tried to do with Mom's Meals was very simple. Three simple steps. We wanted to make products, meals that met the medical needs of those of us with chronic conditions. We wanna be really easy to work with and we wanna make the food that people will eat. 
if you make a product and people don't use it, it's of no value whatsoever. And that's an enormous issue for the healthcare system right now. When you prescribe a drug and the person doesn't take it because they can't afford it or they cut the slices down, whatever. Do we have what you need? Can you get it? And will it be used? Again, I mentioned uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. We work at Mom's Meals. We have registered dietitians and chefs putting the meals together. Putting a dietitian in a room with a chef is like putting Charles Manson in a room with a police force because chefs want it to taste good. And how do you make things taste good? Well, you put in lots of fat, fat tastes good. Dietitians are gonna keep you on the high road. But we use the model based on myplate.gov of what the proportions should be in terms of the food and they taste good. And I will show you some slides on that a little bit about why people will eat what we, we make available for them. It's really important to understand that we, we get enough calories. I'm sorry, we get enough protein in this country. We don't get enough calories. Now, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but we are kind of protein crazy in this country. And there's something every year called the NHANES study. And it turned out that seniors were getting enough protein, but not enough calories. If you don't get enough calories, frankly, enough carbohydrate to run the machine, the body will steal the protein to make energy. And the problem with that is that it takes one, four grams of water to excrete one gram of protein from the system. That puts strain on the kidneys. And as we get older, our kidneys kind of wear down a little bit. So you need to have dairy, a glass of milk, glass of soy milk, uh, some form of cheese. Get the majority of calories from carbohydrates and it should be complex carbohydrates, fruits, whole grain. Your protein should come from lean chicken fish, et cetera, et cetera, and vegetables. And if you can, get as many fresh vegetables as you can across the board. And uh, that tray there is what our mom's meal actually looks like. The pictures were done by the advertising people. Most of our folks will eat their the meals out of the uh, tray. And by disclaimer, when I travel on the road, I take these with me. So I don't have to go you know, to a fast food restaurant. This is really the raison d'etre of, of what we tried to put together and how we work very closely with age options with our special diets. We have made the meals that people, frankly, are my age need. A diabetes-friendly menu, a gluten-free menu, a low-sodium menu, a full vegetarian menu. And two that I'm very proud of are the heart-friendly menu and the pureed meals. And to share a funny story with you, when the pureed meals first came out, I had a couple of them in my refrigerator. And my next door neighbor's daughter, who was 14 at the time, had just gotten braces. And I said, Ellie, how are you doing? So, oh, Mr. Smith, I hate these things. I said, well, I've got these pureed meals. Would you like to try one of these? And she said, okay, she did. And she came over the next day and said, Mr. Smith, they taste really good. So I sent an email to the senior people at Mom's Meals and said, you know, I just had a 14-year-old girl with braces. And hell has no fury like a 14-year-old girl with braces. By way of disclaimer, I have two grown daughters. And she would eat these things. So I guess we never have to do a focus group at all that people will actually eat these. But this is really the key. These are the foods that people need. And if you talk with your physician or talk with a dietitian, you know, where do I need to be at any point in time? One of the most simple things if you're dealing with diabetes is stop eating three meals at one time a day and learn to graze, to eat over a period of time when you have your meals. <clears throat> it makes it easier on your pancreas and your system across the board. The three meals a day has to do, that's a byproduct of the industrial revolution. That has nothing to do with medicine. So very quickly, meals can provide dignity, independence, and improve seniors' lives. Uh, wait a minute, don't make it right. No, yeah, improve seniors, improve lives. Address your nutritional status at all point in time and understand that you are your own machine and you need to take care of yourself. So if anybody has any questions, comments, or observations, I'll, I'll Try to give you intelligent answers. As I said, after I turned 50, I quit lying. So if I don't have the answer, I'll get it to the right people. Thanks again to Joe Smith for this presentation. For a copy of the slides, please check the links in the video description below. We hope that you will join us again on May 23rd when representatives from the Michael J. Fox Foundation discuss Parkinson's disease, its impact on the LGBT plus population, and the importance of participating in research. Sign up for email reminders of all future events at thrivingwithpride.org. Thanks for watching.